You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played only once. The test is in four sections. Write all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. Miss Wang is going to register for her first year social science course. As you listen, fill in the gaps numbered one to six. First you will have some time to look at questions one to six. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good morning. I'm here to register for the first year social science course. I'll just have to fill out this form for our records. What's your name? It's Wang Pearl. Excuse me? Is Pearl your last name? No, it's my first name. My family name is Wang. Can you spell that? Sure. Pearl, P-E-A-R-L. Wang is spelled W-A-N-G. OK, Pearl Wang. What's your address? It's 4832 Kent Road. Can you please repeat that? Kent, K-E-N-T, 4832 Kent Road, flat number 301. All right, and your telephone number? I haven't got the phone on yet. I'm still looking for an accommodation which should be somewhere near the school. OK, well... Please let me have the number once the phone is connected, and I'll make a note here to be advised. And your course? First year's social science course. Social science course. Now I have the timetable. Yes, here it is. You'll have Dr Hill's lectures at 9.30 Monday morning, and also Thursday morning at 10.30. How long do they last? An hour. Which room are they in? The Monday morning lectures take place in room 101. The Thursday ones are in room 215. Thank you. Pearl wants to find an accommodation near her school. She saw an advertisement in the local news agents and telephoned immediately. As you listen to her phone call, answer the questions by circling the correct letter. First, look at the questions 7 to 10. Now listen to the phone call and answer questions 7 to 10. Four six seven nine three one. Sue Jones speaking. Oh, hello. My name is Pearl Wang. I'm ringing about the flat. Oh, yes. You saw my ad in the newsagent's window, did you? That's right. Could you tell me something about the flat? Well, this is a two-bedroom flat. One big room and one a bit smaller. But it's quite nice. The rent is more than I could afford so I've decided to find someone to share the flat with me. Oh, I see. May I have my own bathroom? Yes, there are two bathrooms. There's quite a big sitting room and a kitchen. The flat is an upstairs flat, on the top floor of the house. You know the landlady lives downstairs. And the central heating is there? Yes, gas central heating. Um, what about the rent? How much is it exactly? Well, I pay £90 a week. £90? Yes. But I thought I would pay £50 and ask the other person to pay 40 because, you know, uh, I've got the big bedroom. That seems only fair. I suppose so. What do you do? Work at the Globe Travel Agency. I'm from Australia and came here three months ago. What about you? What do you do? I'm studying, actually, at the Polytechnic Social Science. I'm from China. Sounds interesting. Look, why don't you come round and see the flat? Then you can make up your own mind. It's better than trying to talk about it over the phone. Yes. May I come round and see it in the afternoon? Well, actually, it's a bit difficult for me this afternoon. I've got to go out. How about this evening? At about seven o'clock? Yes. Seven would be fine for me. Um, what's the address? 27 Park Road. 
Oh, I know Park Road. It's quite near where I study. See you tonight. Goodbye. Bye. That is the end of section one. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. In this section, you will hear a conversation between Pearl and Jill. They have met on the campus. As you listen to the conversation, write down the places they are going to in the table. First, you will have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Hi, Jill. How are you? Pearl. Hello. How are you? Kind of tired. I've just moved in a new flat. Really? What's your flat like? Oh,、um, it's a two-bedroom flat. I share it with an Australian girl. My bedroom is small, but it's nice. The walls are pink in colour and the ceiling is white in colour. The curtains are dark red velvet. I have a desk by the window and a small white dressing table near my bed. The carpet is red and black and diamond shape. I've got a wardrobe and an old chair. How nice it is! I must go to see it some day. Listen, I have a lot to tell you, but I don't have time now. I have to go to the bank and I'm kind of late. Then I have an appointment at the local employment office. I'm going to look for a job. Say, why don't we meet for lunch? Lunch. Great idea, but、uh, well, thanks.、Uh, I can't. I have a noon meeting at school. But listen, where are you going to be after lunch? We'll meet for coffee at two thirty, okay? Hmm. Wonderful idea. But at two thirty, um, wait a minute. That's no good for me. I have to mail a lot of letters and packages at the post office, and then I'm going to the Department of Motor Vehicles. I need a new driver's license. But look, how about later? Terrific. Let's see.、Uh, I'll be at the library about four. A classmate is going to meet me there. See, we're going to study for a test together. But、oh, let me think. How about dinner together? Sorry, but that won't work. A friend is going to take me out to dinner. Then I'm going to the community centre. I take an exercise class there. Do you want to come? No, I have to wait for a telephone call at home. It's kind of important. Well, I'm free tomorrow evening. What a surprise! So am I. Shall we go out to eat? That's fine. Shall we meet here at seven o'clock? Good. I'm kind of in a hurry right now. See you tomorrow. See you. Bye. Jill wants to go to the bank, and she asks the directions. As you listen, look at the map and circle the correct letter. Now look at question sixteen. Now listen carefully and answer question sixteen. Excuse me, could you tell me the directions to the Midland Bank? Yes, it's a little bit of a drive from here. It will take you about ten minutes. Drive down Bath Street as far as the second set of traffic lights. Then you turn left, and the bank is at the end of the street on the right. In fact, it's on the corner of Oak Street and Polar Street. I see. Drive down Bath Street. Turn left at the second traffic lights into Oak Street, and the bank is at the end of Oak Street on the right. That's it. You can't miss it. Fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Jill goes to the bank and the post office. As you listen, look at the statements and write T if the statement is true, and F if the statement is false. First, you will have some time to look at questions 17 to 19. Now listen carefully and answer questions seventeen to nineteen. 
Jill is in the bank. I want to deposit these checks, please. Okay. Don't forget to sign them on the back. You'll want to fill out a deposit slip. All right. And I'll need one hundred pounds in cash. What bills do you want? Tens and twenties will be okay. And will you please tell me my bank balance? Then Jill goes to the post office. She's in the post office now. I have to pick up a letter and mail these packages, please. Here is the notice for the letter. Just a moment, please. I'll get it. Here you are. I'm going to need to see some identification. And will you sign this form, please? Uh huh. And are you going to certify these packages? Would you like to register them? Will you insure them? Uh, will you explain that, please? Well, the receiver will have to sign for registered mail, and you can ask for a return receipt. That means we will send you a notice of delivery. Okay, I want to register them and insure them too. In the evening, Pearl and Jill are having dinner in a restaurant. As you listen, tick the boxes of the food Jill and Pearl have ordered. Now you will have some time to look at question twenty. Now listen carefully and answer question twenty. Can I take your order, please? Um, just a minute. Can you help me? It says chili here on the menu. Oh, chili! It's a kind of soup with beans and meat. I see. Pearl, would you like to have some soup? No, I don't want that. How about a steak and potatoes? All right. Two steaks and potatoes. Two steaks and potatoes. How would you like your steak? What do you mean? How do you want your steak? Well done, medium or rare? Oh, please cook it well. Yes, well done. Okay. What kind of potatoes? Baked or French fries? Baked, please. Two baked potatoes. How about an order of vegetables with that? Carrots, beans, or salad? Two salads, please. Anything to drink? What do you want, Pearl? Milk, coffee, or tea? I prefer tea. How about you? Coffee for me, please. Okay, one coffee and one tea. Do you want some dessert? How about ice creams, Pearl? That's my favourite. All right, two ice creams. Anything else? No, that's all. That is the end of section two. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. Mr. Bob Ross called while Mr. David Morris was not in the office. His secretary answered the phone and took a message for him. As you listen to the phone call, look at the message form and fill in it with the information you need. First, you will have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Mr. Morris's office. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. May I speak to Mr. Morris? I'm afraid he's not in at the moment. Who's calling? This is Bob Ross of the Sales Association speaking. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Bob Ross. R O S S. Do you have any idea what time he'll be back? No, I don't, Mr. Ross. Would you like to leave a message? Yes. Will you tell Mr. Morris that I talked with Bill Smith in London this morning? Bill Smith. That's right. Bill told me that they are planning to have a sales meeting in Birmingham on the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth of May. Yes, I have that. Birmingham, May the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth. Right. 
and tell him that Bill said that they would like to have Mr. Morris speak to the group on the morning of the 12th. They want Mr. Morris to speak to the group? Yes, at nine o'clock on the morning of the 12th. There will be about 80 people in the group. I see. Mr. Morris will be speaking to a group of about 80 people. Yes, about 80 salesmen from all over the country, and they'd like him to describe the new marketing plans. Where is the meeting to be held? At the Grant Hotel. Anything else? No, that's the message. May I have your phone number, just in case? Yes, that's 805-7492. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Ross. I'll give Mr. Morris the message as soon as he comes back. Five minutes later, Mr. Morris comes back. I'm back. Did I have any calls? Yes, Mr. Hill called. He didn't leave a message. He said he'd call back tomorrow morning, and uh, James Turner called twice. He's anxious to talk with you. He'd like you to call him as soon as you can. Did he leave a number? Yes, here it is. And Mr. Ross called just a few minutes ago. Did he want me to call him back? No, he left a message for you. Here it is. Mr. Morris called James Turner as soon as he came back. As you listen, complete the notes by writing no more than three words on each line. Now you will have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. One five six two four eight eight. Could I speak to you, Mr. Turner, please? Speaking. Oh, it's you, James, is it? David here. Oh, hello, David. My secretary told me that you had called twice. Is there anything important? Yes, it looks as if I won't be able to keep the appointment we made. That was to be on Thursday, wasn't it? Yes, I'm so sorry. My uncle is arriving from America that afternoon, and we're having a party in the evening. You know, a big family party. I see. But could we meet on Friday or Saturday, or would you prefer the beginning of next week? Afraid I'm tied up at the weekend, and let me just check. Uh, Monday would be all right, I think. Monday's okay for me too. Oh, good. Shall we say the same time as we arranged? Could you come here at 11 o'clock? I'll show you around our place. We could have lunch together and then work out the terms of our contract in the afternoon. Yes, fine. I'll just note it down in my diary. That's Monday the 24th of April. Right, I'll be at your place at 11 o'clock. Hope I haven't messed up your arrangements too much. Oh, no. These things happen, don't they? See you next Monday and have a nice weekend. Thanks. You too, David. Bye. That is the end of Section 3. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Section 4. You will hear a lecture about the Great Barrier Reef. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 33 on page 204. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 33. Despite its name, the Great Barrier Reef isn't just one large coral reef. Rather, it's a system of coral reefs that stretches along the east coast of Australia, covering an area of around 300,000 square kilometres. The Great Barrier Reef is composed of approximately 3,000 individual reefs, which range in size from one hectare to more than 10,000 hectares each. In addition, around 600 islands are scattered throughout the area, particularly at the northern and southern ends. The reefs themselves are composed of over 400 different kinds of coral, 
the largest variety of corals found anywhere in the world. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 34 to 40 on page 205. Now listen carefully and answer questions 34 to 40. Thousands of species of sea animals live in and around the reefs. Altogether, approximately 1,500 species of fish inhabit the reef area, including a number of different kinds of sharks. One of the more interesting mollusks to be found in the reefs is the giant clam. This huge shellfish can live for more than 100 years and can weigh as much as 200 kilos. Sea mammals abound in the area, which serves as a breeding ground for certain types of whales, many of which are endangered. Over 200 species of sea and shorebirds feed, roost or nest among the reefs and islands. Many types of reptiles can also be found living among and near the reefs. Saltwater crocodiles, for example, inhabit the marshes along coastal areas. Amphibians include at least seven species of frogs inhabiting the islands of the reef. Unfortunately, this wondrous area of the world is threatened by climate change. Rising sea temperatures have led to an effect called coral bleaching, that is, large numbers of corals dying off, especially in the shallower areas of the reef. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority is attempting to find effective ways to deal with this issue that threatens the reef. One proposed solution involves shading the reef in certain areas to help keep the surrounding water temperatures down. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.